So I'm counting down to the third Thursday in November. Why? Well, the answer is, it's November 21st, and it's Beaujolais Nouveau Day, and it happens every third Thursday in November. And the French go crazy for it. There are festivals all over the country, and it turns out that Germany is um, ex one of the, the biggest consumers of it, and so are the Japanese. So uh, they even get a head start because they're technically allowed to start drinking it on that Thursday, which comes before the rest of us. So it's a huge celebration and there's nothing quite like drinking the first wine of the harvest. And in fact, you know, Beaujolais Nouveau is from the Gamay grape and it's grown just outside of the area of Burgundy, um, close to Lyon. And it's just one of those red wines that I, I the people I've been turning on to, uh, the wine who did not think they liked red wine, just adore the Gamay grape and they so love Beaujolais and the Beaujolais Nouveau is just a fun one and if you yourself have been a little scared about trying red wine because it's too dry and uh, maybe too tannic of course well give the Beaujolais Nouveau a try it is just um, a fruit red fruit and it has very little tannins if any right so it's smooth and luscious you can drink it on its own every year um, my wife stops by the store and she picks up all the bottles of the Beaujolais Nouveau uh, almost a case of them brings them home and we open them up and we usually have them with some pate and French bread uh, and also a hamburger believe it or not it goes really well with that so the bistros in Paris are uh, a buzz and we get excited at our house every year on the, the third Thursday in November because uh, it just sort of kicks off the holidays, um, if you will. And it's easy to find. You should be able to find the Georges de Boeuf. It's probably the most famous. He's the one who's really responsible for sort of getting the, the Nouveau as, uh, in the marketing and as popular as it is today. And another great alternative, if you can't find the de Boeuf, but I bet you can, um, always try the Louis Jadot. Wow, what a reliable producer. All the wines from that winery are just great and you can't go wrong. So um, the Beaujolais Nouveau has a lot of um, restrictions. In fact, that whole area. So they are very much like the Champagne region where they require all the grapes have to be hand harvested. So very strict and a lot of uh, hard labor as you can imagine. And um, you're probably wondering, well, Trent, well, it's a red wine and all the red wines I've had seem to be really dry. How come this one isn't? Well, they use sort of a different method to make the wines and they're going to use carbonic maceration. And I'll put the full description um, of that in my description box below. But it's a way of where you allow the berries to sort of you know, weigh on themselves, crush themselves, and they're kind of fermented all together. And it kind of gives a sort of, makes the, the wine taste extra fruity, if you will, because it captures the fruit. And it gives just a little bit of um, effervescence to it, or a little bit of carbonation to it. And you'll taste that on your tongue when you drink it. And I find the Beaujolais Nouveaux in particular are nice if you just give them a little bit of a chill. So you don't have to go too crazy, don't make it too cold, but you definitely don't want it too warm. Another thing to keep in mind is don't keep it around for too long. Yes, I know it's a French wine, uh, but that all French wines uh, aren't meant to be aged for a long time. So you get your uh, Beaujolais Nouveau home and try to drink it well before spring if you can, definitely by Easter, um, and, and enjoy it when it's fresh and young and vibrant, which is the whole point of it. Now, Beaujolais uh, Nouveau, of course, that's the one that's made uh, right away, right from the first part of the harvest uh, in, in November, late October. But um, if you do end up liking that one, and many people I've turned on to this grape just love the Gambay grape. They really enjoy the um, Beaujolais. I'll tell you what, there are some different levels. So if you like the Nouveau, I would love for you to go find a Beaujolais, a Beaujolais Viage would be probably my, my best recommendation because there are different levels, right? So there's a Beaujolais, there's a Beaujolais Viage, which is what I have here. Again, this is a, a, a fantastic producer. Um, this one is just nice. We have this on hand quite a bit throughout the year. And then they have what's called a Cru Beaujolais, and that'll be for another episode, and that's the highest end. 
very serious wines. Uh, those can be aged. Uh, they're usually quite a bit more um, uh, money than the Beaujolais Village, but not a lot for the quality. You know, so maybe $20 more than this one and you can get a Cru, Bo Cru Beaujolais. Uh, again, I'll um, do a whole episode on those because they're such great wines. Um, Value-driven and uh, historic and just delicious with food. And that whole area in France around Lyon is really uh, known as uh, sort of the gastronomic capital of, of France. It's definitely a serious foodie place. So knowing about um, the Gamay grape and about Beaujolais. I think if you're a foodie, um, it's a great red wine to make sure you have in your repertoire. Well, last year, a good friend of mine said, Trent, I came from the store and you won't believe it. I said, what is it? He said, well, sitting next to the Beaujolais Nouveau is uh, a Beaujolais Nouveau Rosé. Now you're probably thinking, now why did you keep this all year? Well, I just, I loved it so much. I bought a case of it. I drank all of them and I thought I'm just going to do an experiment and I want to see the 2018 with the 2019. It could be a really bad idea, but what the heck? I thought I'd give it a, a try. Well, I, I didn't even know this was made and it blew me away. You know how much I love rosés anyway. So uh, I, I found the rosé of the Beaujolais Nouveau and it was just great. So delicious to have. And we definitely uh, drank most of them in the springtime when the weather started to get just a, a little warm. And it was great. So if you if you like rosés uh, and you're already buying the Beaujolais Nouveau anyway, pick up the rosé and let me know what you think. Well, thank you for joining me this week. We've had looked at uh, Beaujolais Nouveaux. It's so exciting. Uh, it's a, a delicious grape. Trust me on this one, especially if you think you don't like red wine. And I know a lot of people think, well, isn't that the wine everyone recommends for Thanksgiving? Well, yes and sort of no. You know how difficult it is when you're talking about the typical American Thanksgiving meal, right? Where it has everything from savory dressings to candy jams and with marshmallows on top and Brussels sprouts or green beans and not to mention the turkey itself. Well, I've done some experimenting over the year and I'll, I'll post uh, um, something about what I think are some good wines to have for Thanksgiving uh, in the description box. So as a red wine goes, it is nice to have on a Thanksgiving table, but again, like most red wines, they're going to have their limit. So I found it's nice with the dark meat turkey because um, Beaujolais Nouveau is quite nice with roasted chicken and roasted um, turkey, but I would stick to the dark meat. And it goes very well with, I would say, the um, sage or the savory um, dressings or stuffings that a lot of people have. So it's, it's good there. It's hard for it to compete with the candy jams and marshmallows. So, um, so again, yes, you could definitely have it for the wine, um, red wine drinkers who are uh, who are there, and maybe they want to try red wine to go with Thanksgiving. Give it a try. It's it's one of those very food friendly, flexible wines. So I don't. It's not going to be a problem. It just has a hard time competing with some of those sweet dishes. Wow. All let's talk about Thanksgiving and Beaujolais Nouveau and the Gamay grape. It makes me awfully thirsty and very excited for the holidays. And I hope you have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving and a joyous Beaujolais Nouveau Day. It's November. It's getting exciting. So thank you for being such low subscribers. Let me know what you think. Did you try the Nouveau? Did you try a Beaujolais Viage? What did you have with your Thanksgiving meal? Let me know. Well, until next time, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.